In our previous discussion, we treated the source and the body as if they were shorted together and at the same potential. That won't always be practical. When you have multiple MOSFETs on a single die, to insist that all of the source terminals be at the body potential can be a little too restrictive and won't accommodate a lot of circuit designs. So we have to be prepared for a potential difference between the source and the body and the V sub SB. It won't necessarily be zero. It will have the effect of shifting the threshold voltage. And that's the body effect. When a potential difference between the source and the body is there, the threshold voltage changes. So let's go back and talk about the threshold. There are two charge regions in a MOSFET that's operating beyond threshold, that is in inversion. There's the depletion charge, there's the inversion charge. So the depletion charge is made up of the ions that were generated when all of the carriers were created. So if this is an N body, hence a PFET, the depleted uh, ions are all positive because they're donor ions. They create an electron, so they're positive. And then you go into inversion, you get the opposite type of charge, so you have a bunch of holes, so they're positive too. So the inversion charge and the depletion charge are the same sign. In the case of PFET, they're both positive. Now the existence of the space charge in the inversion layer was justified, rationalized in a previous video by envisioning the capacitances involved. You have an oxide capacitance, which is the literally the effective capacitor that you might replace the oxide with if you're going to turn this into a circuit. And you have the depletion capacitance, which is the capacitor you would replace the depletion layer with if you're going to turn into a circuit. The charge that is in the inversion layer is the sum of the charge that's on the bottom plate of the oxide capacitor and the top plate of the depletion capacitor. And so we'll write it like this. The inversion charge is the oxide capacitance times the voltage across the capacitor that's associated with inversion charge. So it's not just the gate source voltage, which is the voltage that's placed across the oxide layer, but it's the gate source voltage minus the threshold voltage because inversion charge does not start to appear until the gate source voltage is above threshold. And we added this zero, and I'm going to reemphasize it again this time. And I think this meaning will become more clear too. And then you have the charge from the depletion capacitance, which is the depletion layer capacitance times the voltage between the source and the body. What is between the source and the body but the depletion layer? So that's, uh, that's what that is. So this, though we came up with this expression. We argued it two lectures ago. We're going to use that as kind of a starting point. We need to argue now what the depletion width does in inversion. And this is going to be an important point. So this is kind of a preliminary, along with reminding you of this equation here, that in inversion, the depletion layer is a constant. And that's why I put the submax on here. If you are beyond threshold, hence you have started to develop depletion, the inversion layer stops growing with voltage. Before threshold, as you increase voltage, the depletion layer gets wider and wider and wider. That is, W sub D gets larger. But then it, it stops growing. Do you remember why? We, we discussed a little bit why it would have to stop growing. Because the inversion layer starts to fill up with charge, and that charge layer, which grows rapidly, shields the material behind the inversion layer from the additional electric field in the oxide. So it's a shielding uh, phenomenon. So uh, you can take the width of the depletion layer to be a constant in inversion. And back in chapter 5, we worked out what it is. Refer back to equation 551. Phi sub st is the surface potential that you have as soon as you reach threshold. And n sub a is the doping density. Then now it's you should call epsilon sub st. This is the permittivity of the semiconductor, silicon presumably. That's what this epsilon sub s is. It's the exact same symbol I use for electric field, so it's hard to call it epsilon when I call that one e, but it, it's, it's, it's typically traditionally an epsilon. So there's our expression. 
I'm going to rearrange it a little bit. So uh, factor out C oxide. You can factor anything out of anything you want. If you factor C oxide out of this whole thing, then you have C depletion divided by C oxide times V sub SP. Again, V sub SP is the voltage between the source and the body. So you have this variation, but you see, I want to simplify it a little bit by putting these parentheses here and looking at what it must mean. So I just sort of shifted around parentheses. And the parentheses item, I'll call that the threshold voltage as a function of the source body voltage. This really is the threshold voltage because the inversion charge is the capacitance of the oxide layer times the voltage placed across the oxide layer, which is the voltage between the gate and the source, minus the threshold voltage. So the point is, is that as soon as you allow there to be a voltage between the source and the body, the threshold voltage changes. And that's why we put a subscript zero on what we had in even earlier discussions called V sub T. So this is the threshold voltage as, as a function of the body voltage. This ratio of capacitances is one of several coefficients we're going to start using at this point now. This is the first of them. It's called the body effect coefficient. So it's what multiplies the body voltage, V sub SB. Typically, V sub SB is referred to as the body voltage. It's the potential difference between the source and the body. But if you write down what these things are, so the capacitance of the depletion layer, and remember, these are capacitance per unit area. And this course, that's big C always just means that. Instead of epsilon A over D, it's just epsilon over D. But it doesn't matter. The areas would cancel if I took this ratio because they're, they're going to have the same footprint. Depletion region capacitance is epsilon for the, for the semiconductor, epsilon for the depletion region, which is just epsilon for the silicon, divided by the width of the depletion region, W sub D max, and the capacitance of the oxide, which is a lot easier to see, is epsilon for the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide, epsilon over d distance there. Remember the sub OXE, that is electrical capacitance and the electrical thickness of the oxide, which is a little bit different than the physical thickness of the oxide. And this is going to be important because we're going to see an opportunity to improve performance of MOSFETs by minimizing this oxide, this T sub OXE by minimizing everything that does not have to do with the physical thickness of the dielectric. Let's get a number on alpha. So with silicon dioxide, so the epsilon for silicon is 11.8, and epsilon for silicon dioxide is 3.9. Technically, it's 11.8 times epsilon naught and 3.9 times epsilon naught, but the epsilon naughts cancel. And so you're left with alpha is 3 times the oxide of electrical thickness divided by the maximum depletion width, which we have that expression for. That's the case of silicon with the silicon dioxide dielectric layer. That's the body effect when you actually have a body voltage dependence inside the threshold voltage. That's the body effect. So there's no body effect if the source and the body are shorted together so that V sub S B equals zero. And then it's just V T S minus V T zero. So V sub T zero is the threshold voltage when the source and the body are shorted together. That's what V sub T zero means physically. This is the body effect coefficient. Let's look at the useful limit here. So there's the expression of the body effect coefficient. It's 3 times the oxide thickness divided by the depletion width for silicon and silicon dioxide. If you do take that to 0, so that there's no body effect, it goes to 0. You ask yourself, what can I do in my design to make it go to 0? Well, you can look at the expression. As the oxide thickness divided by the depletion width goes to zero. The oxide thickness needs to be much, much less than the depletion width, and then you can say that uh, you've eliminated the body effect. Now that's a, actually a desirable thing, because the body effect raises the threshold voltage. You just go back and, and look at this. See, the body effect takes a nice low threshold voltage and makes it something higher. And a high threshold voltage is generally undesirable. It's usually a goal to have as low a threshold voltage as possible 
because that allows you to have a larger current in the MOSFET and a larger current in the MOSFET gives you a faster circuit. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, next time. So we'll stop uh, with that right now. A design goal is to minimize the electrical oxide thickness. In chapter 7, we're going to go over a few key ways to do that, one of which is to use a high epsilon material, the new hafnia, well not new, but a new, newly adopted material in the LSI fabrication.